This is Personal Injury Court. Good day, everyone. This is the matter of Richie versus Elizabeth Gray Salon. Mr. Richie, it's my understanding from the documents that you file with this court that you sustained injuries at Miss Gray's salon, and you're asking this court to award you medical expenses of $10,000 pain and suffering of $70,000 for a total award of $80,000. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. And Ms. Gray, is your position that you provided the service he requested and this is not your fault, true? Yes, Your Honor. Well, let's get into the legal sauce. Mr. Ritchie, what brought you to Ms. Gray's salon this day? Well, Your Honor, as a software engineer, I don't really get the chance to meet a lot of women. I've been doing this for about 10 years and I still don't have a ring or anything like that to show for it. I met this wonderful woman named Debbie and we had been talking for a good long while, we have been texting and it finally came down to the point where she not only wanted to go on a date but she wanted to go on a trip, she wanted to go to the beach. That's a truth or dare moment. <laughs> I was actually a little bit self-conscious about something that my friend Dave told me. He said that I had to do something about my organic sweater so to speak, my body hair your honor. I, I have a lot of it, and he said, she'll think it's gross, I need to do something about it. So he uh, knew of Miss Gray's establishment, and he set up the appointment for me. So your friend told you you needed a little manscaping to kind of clean up for this date and the beach appearance. Yes, Your Honor. Miss Gray, tell me about your salon. I am the owner of the Elizabeth Gray Salon. We specialize in facial and hair removal. I've been in business for about 10 years. Um, we offer so many choices from laser, which uses a, a beam of light, to electrolysis, which is electricity, to uh, sugar waxing as well, which is we just rip it right off with a strip. Okay. So we offer, we offer a lot of choices. Uh, about 75% of my clients are women. However, in recent years, Your Honor, I've seen a lot of men coming in for some grooming, uh, waxing some obvious places and not so obvious places. Mm -hmm. So guys get more wax than their chest. Exactly. Everyone likes a little grooming and look their best. I really believe, Your Honor, that if I can help not only women but all people look beautiful, that inside it will help them feel better about themselves. So when someone comes in for hair removal, particularly a man, uh, you take it off where they want it taken off. We do. We make sure that we go over every step with them. So Mr. Ritchie is not really any different from your other male clients who want their chest to be bare. No, he is not. So Mr. Ritchie, what happened? They take me to this back room where there's no windows or anything and get me down to just my boxers and a robe. So. The wax lady comes up to me and she asks, what's your pain tolerance? And I figured since my bud Dave could handle it, so could I, so I just said average. They started off with just one patch of skin and it's one of those things where you just think that it'll get easier as it keeps going and that just was not the case. They started off by getting this kind of like the stick and rubbing a little bit of the wax on um, one half of my chest. Okay. And then- Now it wasn't hurting yet, right? It was, it was already getting there, but I was just trying to bear through it. Okay. So she gets out the piece of paper and she presses into my skin. That's when I really felt like something was not right. She rips it off and a piece of my skin with it. And she just kept going over and over again until my skin just looked ravaged. It was bubbling, it was blistering. It did not seem like everything was all right. I asked, I asked her, I asked the wax lady, is this supposed to be normal? And she told me, quit being a baby, man up. No. It was a harrowing experience, Your Honor. So this is what that wax did to your skin? Yes, Your Honor, and it's still painful just standing here in this shirt. Is that how this is supposed to work, Miss Gray? That sounds like a torture chamber. No, Your Honor, that is not how it works at my salon. Well, how is this supposed to work? Well, I was, at the time of this incident, I was in my office doing some filing papers, and one of my estheticians come, came running back to me, and she said she had provided a service to Mr. Ricci. He ran out of the salon without paying. All she cares she about is the money. Tried... I had to run to the ER Your for second-degree she... burns. Our process at our salon. But isn't this this simple, though, that you put ha hot wax on the skin and you rip the skin off, 
then it's not supposed to be that way, right? Isn't it that simple? Actually, it's not that simple. Okay. But we offer various choices to remove hair. And we tried to talk with Mr. Ricci. He did not want to hear it. He Your started Honor, I was on my lunch break. I was just trying around. to get in and get out. It's supposed to be something in simple. And out. That is not the process of our salon. What we, options did you We get? offer laser. That's when we use a beam of light. We offer electrolysis, using electricity to uh, burn the hair follicle, sugar wax, a substance over the subject where we use a shrimp to take off the hair in the opposite direction of hair growth. So if he had used these other options, then he wouldn't have had these injuries? Exactly. If he would have listened to what my esthetician was trying to tell him, but instead he would not. Your Honor, it wasn't that I wasn't listening. It was that there were, um, I was getting pulled into the appointment before I even had time to ask any real questions. Uh, you guys said, oh, we have a line. We have to get going, Mr. Ricci. Did they that give you options? No, Your Honor, they did not give me all the options. Because you were not listening, Mr. Ricci. If he doesn't understand the options, then it's pretty natural that he choose what you put in front of him, right? And that's where he is not being forthcoming with the truth. We set him down to make sure he understood his choices. Okay. And we are for many, as I've already stated. He would not listen. We even But look tested. at his chest, Miss Gray. Hot wax, is it supposed to do that? This is unfortunate, but however, we tested a patch of his skin with hot wax. He did not complain at all, Your Honor. He even said, oh, my tolerance level for pain is average. What is your scale, the Spanish Inquisition? And that, and if he does not let someone know about if this hurts or doesn't hurt, how are we supposed to know? No, I didn't know I had to come up with a single word. word anytime, anytime we deal with cases, that involve a pain tolerance. It's always dangerous to compare women's pain tolerance versus men. Exactly. We're babies. Y'all have babies. That okay? is right, Your Honor. You've submitted $10,000 in medical expenses to this court. Please explain your injuries. Not only did I experience second degree burns, they ravaged and permanently scarred my chest for the rest of my life. A guy like me doesn't get too many chances with Debbie's. And these, these people, these, this staff at Elizabeth Gray's salon have permanently damaged any chances of ever meeting another Debbie. For the rest of my life. This is what her staff did to me, Your Honor. That looks like that hurts right now. It feels like sandpaper every time I try to even move my arm. Ms. Gray, you see, these are real permanent injuries. He did not say anything that he was in any pain. He just kept silent. This is the first time kept I kept silent. I was rolling around on the table, panting, and I asked her, I asked her, was this normal? Was this supposed to be happening? And she told me, man up, quit being a baby. Mr. Ritchie, I'm not as brave as you are. I've never had manscaping. So I've got to understand exactly how this happens from a technical standpoint. This court has consulted an expert esthetician, Ms. Erin Renee. Sheriff, will you get Ms. Renee from the hallway, please? Yes, Your Honor. Tell the truth next time, Mr. Ritchie. Talk to me, folks. Good day, Ms. Renee. Hi. How long have you been working as an esthetician? I've been an esthetician for 14 years. I did bring a model because I wanted to show the process of hair removal with waxing. With the hot wax, all estheticians who perform this service always check the temperature of the wax before they start removing hair. And we check the temperature on ourselves by applying a little bit on the inside of our arm here. And that way, we know exactly what the client is gonna be experiencing. So I'm applying the wax on the direction that the hair actually grows so that you're able to get all of the hair follicles out with one pull. I am always honest with my clients and I try to understand their threshold for pain before we get started with the service. In his client intake form, he filled out all of the questions and he said that his pain tolerance was pretty average. And he also said that he's not on any medications that would make his skin hypersensitive to the waxing. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull it. Mm. Yes. So you'll feel it. Now, I'm seeing his reaction. He's got tears in his eyes. 
Mr. Robbins, thank you for coming in here. How did that feel? It hurt. <laughs> Mr. Renee, he got second degree burns where his skin was ripped out. I won't say that's typical or it's not supposed to necessarily happen. However, there are different things that will impact your results. One, what did he do before the waxing? Mm -hmm. Whether it was laying out by the beach or going to the pool, hanging out, whether it was doing a lot of drinking before he came in to get his service. Mm -hmm. There are different things that can impact the results. Thank you, ma'am. You are released. Thank you, Mr. Robbins. Mr. Richie, I gotta ask you, were you drinking, taking medications? Did you go to the beach? No, Your Honor. Your Honor, may I present to you a disclosure form? Sheriff, if you'll retrieve the disclosure form. Thank you very much. It reads, Wax Services Client Release Form. Number one, have you ever been treated for skin cancer? You mark no. Correct. Number six, are you exposed to the sun on a daily basis or are you considering spending more time in the sun soon? You mark no. Correct. Number seven, Correct. do you use a tanning bed? Listen. You mark no and then there's a signature next to the customer signature indication. Is that your signature, Mr. Ritchie? Your Honor, yes, that might be my signature. So you lied. How do you know he lied? I have a witness who can corroborate my story. And your witness is Miss Alice Roman. That is correct. Miss Roman, would you stand and sure. come to the podium? Absolutely. What did Mr. Ritchie lie about? Well, I was in the waiting room with Mr. Ritchie as he was talking on the phone very loudly. I wasn't trying to be nosy. And I overheard him saying that he was at the tanning bed prior to coming into the salon. You went to the tanning bed, but you said no on the form? I didn't even have time to really read them before they dragged me to the back, eager so to get to their torture. you were not listening and not even reading the questions. Folks, let me give you a legal lesson. Anytime you go into a business and they have you fill out an information packet or an application, it is very, very, very important that you be honest because they have to rely on your representation. Ms. Roman, you, you may be seated. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Gray, so your esthetician put the wax on her arm? The esthetician actually tested his skin, Your Honor. And he did not complain, he did not say anything. Oh, my uh, pain tolerance is average. I think I've heard what I need to hear and I'm ready to render my decision. Folks, in every personal injury case, the plaintiff has to prove really three things. You gotta prove that the defendant was wrong, that's number one. Number two is that that wrong caused your injuries. You've put up evidence here today that you totally relied on Elizabeth Gray Salon to take the hair off your chest so you could go on this romantic journey with Debbie. Instead, the esthetician put the hot wax on your chest and ripped your skin off changed your chest forever and destroyed your opportunity potentially for the love of your life. Ms. Gray, you have put up evidence today that your salon gave him several options, but he wasn't listening. He wanted this chest hair gone. He chose the hot wax. Your esthetician actually put it on his skin and asked him, is it too hot? When he didn't complain, she went forward with the procedure and he got burns. You've pointed out that he was not quite forthcoming on the application where he indicated that he had not been in a tanning bed. In fact, he had. Here, that collision of the evidence raises two legal principles. One is care for your own safety. You have a responsibility to take care of yourself long before you look to someone else to take care of you. Part of that is being truthful on the application form. The other legal principle is professional judgment. Although manscaping and hair removal is common, it is a profession. It's why estheticians have to be licensed. Here, that professional judgment involves not only application of the wax, but whether to do it in light of the circumstances. The expert witness put the wax on her own arm to see if it was hot. The evidence in this case, your esthetician tested the wax on his skin. 
Your salon is responsible for Mr. Ritchie's injuries because your professional judgment is not relieved based on his misrepresentation. You still must exercise professional judgment in determining whether the wax is too hot or not. It is very simple. It was too hot, should not have been put on, it caused real injury, this is your fault. I find in favor of the plaintiff, and I'm going to award you a total award of $80,000 against Elizabeth Gray Salon. That's my final verdict, and this matter is adjourned. <laughs> Our attorneys across America just viewed this case for the first time. Let's hear what Terry Crouppen has to say. A professional is held to a high standard when performing a service for pay. The esthetician should have known the plaintiff had been to a tanning booth by the orange color of his skin. Based on this, they should have warned him about proceeding with waxing or refused to perform the service. Bottom line, the wax was too hot and that's why the plaintiff won.